Are you adventurous? I know I am. Hi, I'm Cycling Explorer, and I don't know about you, but I'm always curious about what's around the next bend, like the one over my shoulder, and I'll show that to you in a little bit. Or what happens to be in the valley, or up on the hill, around the lake, or even a mile down the road. So come with me as I begin to explore all the different trail systems that this great country of ours offers. I happen to be based in Columbus, Ohio, so obviously that's where I'm going to start, but I want to present to you all the little nooks and crannies that these great trails offer. So come with me as I begin my adventure. I wake up ready to cycle. The first thing to check is the weather. Okay, so you just got up, you did your shower, you brushed your teeth, you did all the other hygiene things you need to do. Now what? Well, the best thing you can do is to fuel yourself correctly. Now typically what an average person does, they have a cup of coffee, they run off to work, they have a big lunch, and then at two in the afternoon when their body's processing all that food, they're tired. That's why five hour energy is so effective for people, is because they're not eating correctly. So my question for you is, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Now typically I start off with a bowl of oatmeal, I like the maple and brown sugar stuff, it's really good, I probably have it every other day. Uh, I then go with a bagel with some sort of spread, and you'll say, what are you doing with the spread? And I'll say, well, I need the calories because I actually burned so many. And then, I don't know about you, but occasionally I get leg cramps. So one of the ways I deal with that is I eat a banana because it's high in potassium, and that stops the leg cramps. So if you haven't thought about eating a banana for breakfast, you need to start doing that, especially if you're getting leg cramps. I got this Cannondale Super 6 a couple of years ago and I absolutely love it. It's extremely fast. If you've never been on a real racing bike, you got to at least uh, take one out for a test drive at uh, one of the bike shops. Uh, the braking is really good. The handling is really good. Um, tires are so-so, but uh, all in all, I highly recommend this bike for uh, anybody who wants to ride. Um, I can get up uh, some really high speeds on this thing. I've actually been clocked going down a hill at uh, 58 miles an hour according to my phone and uh, it's fast. One of the biggest things I ponder in the morning is what direction do I head? Do I go north or south, east or west? Each area within even Columbus has many opportunities and great things to see. Uh, today I've decided I want to start at this particular suspension bridge, which was built in 1922 and renovated in 2013. And I want to take it down the Alum Creek Trail south from here, and I want to go through Confluence Trails area, back through Blacklick Creek Trails, I want to end up at Pickerington Ponds and show you what that looks like today. So come with me as we start by checking out this bridge. And today I happen to be at the suspension bridge between Bexley and Columbus and I'm going to give you some history on what happened with this bridge in 1922 and where we are today. So come on, let's check it out. On the right side of the circle is Bexley and Wolf Park and on the left side is Columbus and Academy Park. Dated November 9, 1922 from Engineering News, these are the actual schematics for the bridge itself. Now you notice that the footers are about 13 feet below the riverbed. This bridge went through major reconstruction in April of 2013 through approximately February of 2014 at a cost of approximately $520,000. Now back in the early 1900s, this was the main way for students to get to school. In 1911, a group of area businessmen founded Columbus Academy 
to provide a local option for secondary education at the highest standards. During the beginning phases, Columbus Academy emerged as an all-boys college preparatory school. Columbus Academy's first campus was situated on four acres along the Columbus side of the Alum Creek River. Numerous additions to the main house were made as the number of students in grades 5 to 12 grew. After continued enrollment growth and repeated flooding along the Alum Creek, the board approved a 20-year plan for relocation starting in 1948 and they left in 1968 to Gahanna. Columbus ended up with the land and named the park Academy Park after the school. Now the bridge played a vital role because prior to 1922, the students from Bexley had to walk down to Main Street to cross the river. Broad Street was not constructed yet and it would be three years after the bridge before the construction of St. Charles just to the north. Hey, I don't know about you, but my favorite part about a suspension bridge is when it actually moves. So I don't know if this is gonna work, but uh, hey, let's just see if you can feel it moving. I can actually feel it. Hopefully the camera picks it up too. This is always so much fun to do. If you ever have a chance just to jump up and down on a suspension bridge, it's always a blast. Before we get going, a quick overview of Wolf Park, which was donated to the City of Columbus for $1. It's 42 and a half acres. It has athletic fields, two ball diamonds that are not lighted, a parking lot, shelter house, eight tennis courts, which are lighted, a great area to run your dog. It has restrooms and one working water fountain. Going forward, in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to put the trail itself so you can actually see what it looks like. Let's start by checking out Academy Park. The first thing you're going to notice is the Cleo du Marie Athletic Complex. Inside this building are reservable two hour blocks of basketball and volleyball courts. Now you may reserve these between 3 and 10 days in advance. From an outdoor viewpoint, it's located on almost 29 acres. There's a soccer field. There are ball diamonds, but they are leased. There's also an outdoor basketball court and a parking lot. Let's start by working our way down south along the Alum Creek River to Main Street. When you come upon Main Street, you're going to need to veer to the right, go past the Kroger store as you see on the right hand side, down to the traffic light, cross the street, come all the way back so you're straight across from where we are right now, and the trail will continue on. There is no way to just run straight across the street. There actually is a curb there that I'm working real hard to get removed. The alternative is to, when you hit Main Street, is to go left, go down to those sets of traffic lights as you see here, cross the street, and come back. I have a neat little find I want to show you that is just off the beaten path. I'm about 30 yards south of Main Street in Bexley, Ohio, on the official Allen Creek Trail. And right about there, there's a special little stairway that goes right down into the water. So if you're a kayaker or a canoer, this may be a great place for you. I don't know if you've checked this place out, but come on with me and let's go do that. This is our first official find on the Alum Creek Trail. Now, I have never seen anybody ever kayak from this spot. I have seen a couple of people fish from it, but that's about it. If you haven't tried it from this location, you're probably missing out on a great opportunity. I have seen people get on at the suspension bridge and kayak south, but not from here. Now, obviously parking is an issue because you are probably a hundred yards away from the closest parking spot. 
Let's continue south along the Alum Creek Trail heading towards Livingston Avenue. Safety is always important and that's why I'm pointing out this one area you need to be aware of. So basically, if you look over my shoulder here, you're going to notice an embankment. And that embankment actually holds up part of the freeway. But a lot of kids love to hang out there, especially during the summertime, late afternoon, early evenings. So you need to be aware of that. If there are kids hanging there, you need to watch this particular area. So um, the reason it's important is that there have been documented cases here over the last couple of years, although nothing recent about the knockout game being done in this particular spot. So to give you an idea of this particular location, I happen to be about 100 yards north of Livingston Avenue. And I'm gonna give you a little bit more reasons in a second as to why this area is something you need to watch out for. Just past that Wendy's there, which I'll mark with an X in a second, there happens to be a liquor store and there's a lot of traffic that runs back and forth down this street. Another issue with this area is there's a lot of homeless people that love to reside in this area. Sometimes they live underneath the bridge. As of a check recently, there's no one down there. But they also like to hang out in this grassy area that you're seeing right now. One of the great things about the Columbus Metro Parks is the fact that everything is well marked and it also happens to be well taken care of. As example, this particular bridge was actually restained about a week ago. Now our first offshoot trail is here on the left side just past the picnic bench and basically about 30 yards back you're going to find a bridge that was built in the 1950s and it connects this side going over the Alum Creek River with Bexley and on Bexley's side there happens to be the Jewish Center and all the buildings associated with that. Hey, this is Cycling Explorer. Today I happen to be on Alum Creek Trail. We had some heavy rains yesterday, and uh, this particular area I happen to be approximately a third of a mile south of Livingston Avenue. And uh, there's a biker, I actually have one picture of him that uh, I'll show a little bit later, where he tried to go through and he got about a third of the way and it was uh, almost up to his knees. So uh, probably about three to four feet deep at the deepest part. I went around the bushes here on this side because I wanted to get shots from both ends.
Now Columbus loves to fish and one of the neat places along this trail happens to be this particular lake and there's another one which I'll show in a second. Basically these two lakes are very well stocked with fish which you can see obviously and there's not a lot of people back here so if you want a quiet little spot where you can do a lot of fishing I would probably say I see about four or five people here a day because it is a hike so bring your bike. Now this is the second fishing hole I was telling about hidden in these bushes but it's a great spot and right off the bat you should see a fish jumping. Time to continue our trek south. Safety is always important to me, and I don't know about you, but I'm always leery whenever I go down under a bridge like this. Come with me as we go check this out. Now this particular underpass can be a little bit dangerous. The reason is that there's only really space for one bicycle going through it and if people aren't paying any attention they're going to run into each other trying to see who can get inside the tunnel first. This underpass always floods during heavy rains. Today I want to show you a really neat place to picnic. Now behind this particular shelter house which is dedicated to Lot Smith, you find a hill. And if you work your way all the way up to the top of the hill, you're going to find a very quiet little cove up here to where you can actually have a nice quiet little lunch. So come on with me as we finish our way up the top.
Hey, this is Cycling Explorer. I happen to be today at Smith Farms, which is part of the Columbus Park System. Many years ago, this particular acreage was owned by Lot Smith. There is a ton of history here. If you haven't been out here, it's about a third of a mile off of Alum Creek Trail, and for the most part, that's the best way to get here because they keep the parking lot locked, except for on special occasions. So come on, let's check out some of the history. Its location is just north of Huron Pond and east of Sycamore Fields. For those who are unaware, Smith Farms is off the main Alum Creek Trail. Here you can see it off in the distance of about a third of a mile. Smith Farms is part of the larger Three Creeks Park, City of Columbus, and Metro Park Park System. Smith Farms is comprised of approximately 335 acres and was purchased in 1994 from the Lot Smith family. Of the acreage, the use ranges from farmed areas for the spring and summer program, ecological and biological workshops that are both for the Metro Parks and the City of Columbus groups. There is open space, wetlands, farming, prairie areas, and ponds all to explore. Many specialty permitted activities such as racing and cycling events take place here throughout the year. The building on the site is currently being used for storage for the maintenance staff as well as the recreation staff. Parking is only open for special events. Now on this visit, one of the recent art sessions had taken place and here's some of the things left over. If you're looking for a great place for a picnic lunch, walk over to the pond and set out your blanket. You can watch the birds flying in and out. Other activities do take place here as I watched a guy fly his model airplane from the closed parking lot. Today I found this guy and he only stayed visible for a couple of minutes. So on the east side of Alum Creek Trail happen to be Smith Farms, but on the west side there is Sycamore Fields area of Three Creek Park. Let's go check it out. Hey, this is Cycling Explorer welcoming you to Sycamore Fields Park here in Columbus, Ohio. And today I'm going to show you all the amenities that this particular park has to offer. So come on, let's go check it out.
Sycamore Fields Park is about 7.8 acres. It has ball diamonds, they're not lighted. It has basketball courts, picnic areas, playgrounds, wooded area, lots of areas for soccer, and it also has a loop that goes around it uh, for running, and it's about 0.8 miles. People probably didn't notice that there is a dog park here at Sycamore Fields. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a nice area. There are separate areas for both the small and the large dogs. It does have drinking water seasonally for the dogs. The park size is about four acres and both the small and large area are fenced in. It opened May 16th, 2009. It does happen to be a former field, so there is no shade trees, at least for the years to come. And for people sitting, it's very limited to about one picnic table. Time to get back on the trail and head south. Today I happen to be at Huron Pond, which happens to be part of the Columbus Metro Park System. If you haven't been out here to check out the fishing, you need to do it. It's, there's just tons of people here. This is just off the Alum Creek Trail, which is right over there, as well as the Alum Creek River. So in the meantime, let me show you what this place is all about. Now if you like fishing, you've come to a great place. This is a list of the recent stocking that has occurred at the pond. They've added 800 2 to 4 inch largemouth bass, 1,000 2 to 4 inch bluegills, 1,000 4 to 5 inch channel cats, and 6,000 1 to 3 inch flathead minnows. These fish can be caught next year and should be fully grown in about two years. Now there's other things to do at this park besides just fish. Now first of all, there's plenty of parking. There are lots of picnic tables, so bring a lunch. There's plenty of open space so that you can throw a football, frisbee, or whatever else. And after lunch, you can take a walk down to Alum Creek and enjoy the view. One of the things I like about this pond is the fact that it is paved all the way around. So if you want to ride your bike around and get a nice view of where you want to stop, you can do that. 
the length of this uh, oval pond is a little bit more than half a mile so if you want to add a little bit of mileage do a couple of laps It's time to continue south. Let's start by crossing the Alum Creek again. Then we'll follow it along until we go underneath I-270. And the next thing you know, about two miles away and a couple of lakes to go by, we will end up at confluence area of Three Creeks Park. As we work our way down to our next stop, I want to talk to you about some of the health benefits of cycling. Did you know that cycling is good for your heart? Cycling is associated with improved cardiovascular fitness as well as a decrease in the risk of coronary heart disease. Did you know cycling is good for your muscles? Riding a bike is a great way for toning and building your muscles, especially in the lower half of your body, that being your calves and thighs and your rear end. It is also great low impact exercise for those with joint issues. Did you know that cycling is good for your waistline and that you can burn a lot of calories while biking, especially when you're cycling faster than a leisurely pace? Did you know that cycling is good for your lifespan? Bicycling is a great way to increase your longevity as well as cycling regularly has been associated with increased life years even after adjusting for injuries that can occur while cycling. Did you know that cycling is good for your coordination? Moving both feet around in circles while steering with both hands and your own body weight is a good practice of coordination skills. And lastly, did you know that cycling is good for your mental health? Riding a bike has been linked to improve mental health.
Hey, this is Cycling Explorer. I've managed to make it about 10 miles so far and we're at the Confluence Trails area of Three Creeks Park. Behind me happens to be Turtle Pond, which you'll see a lot of people fishing here. So while I take a break from hauling all this camera equipment, why don't we check out this park? Three Creeks is named for the confluence where Alum, Big Walnut, and Blacklick Creeks all join. Owls, Great Blue Heron, and more than 100 species of birds have been sighted. Visitors may catch a glimpse of a beaver, a mink, coyote, or a deer. The 1100-acre park is in partnership with the City of Columbus Recreation and Parks Department. Did you know that this Confluence Trails area actually has one large shelter house that seats 64 folks? There are restrooms, which I've needed a few times. They have grills. You can fish in Little Turtle Pond. And it has access if you head east to the Blacklick Creek Greenway Trail or west to the Alum Creek Greenway Trail. There's also an half a mile pet trail that's unimproved and a couple of other small little trails for you to check out. Hey, this is Cycling Explorer. Today I want to talk about sprint or sprinting. And it's real important when you're in a race or you happen to be on a ride with a bunch of people and you want to break away, you have to have the ability to do that. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that. So basically, what I'm talking about is a set. And a set happens to be three of something. So I want you to go all out for one particular time, 15 seconds for a set of three. So you're going to do this 15 second burst three times. That's one set. So if you happen to be a beginner, I want you to do it two times. If you happen to be an intermediate cyclist, then you're going to do it three sets or three times. If you're advanced, what you do it four sets. Now what's going to happen is you're going to take off and you go for 15 seconds and then what? Well, I want you to rest for three to five minutes after you do that particular uh, breakaway sprint. So you're going to rest there. And then after you do the three sets, instead of three to five minutes, I want you to rest for 10 minutes. And then do that again after the second set, third set, fourth set, wherever you happen to be. Now the question is, what exactly do I do? Well, there are four different ways you can do this. The first one is you're at a stop position and you go out where you figure 15 seconds is away, a lamp post, the end of your driveway, a fire hydrant, whatever the case may be. But you go all out. So you're giving it 100% of your all for 15 seconds breakaway speed. If you haven't seen cyclists in races do this, that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to get a competitive advantage. And if you practice this, you're going to have it. So then the next and another one that's fairly easy to do is you're going downhill. Figure on some downhill where you can get at least 25 miles an hour out of it. And when you hit the bottom, that's where your 15 seconds start. Now gravity's working against you, but I want you to keep that pace of wherever you happen to be going exactly where it's at for 15 more seconds. So you're going to give it that push, but you got gravity working against you. The third way to do it is you're riding down a flat surface and you're going say 15, 18 miles an hour depending upon where you happen to be. So you're riding hard and then I want you to give it 15 seconds of your all. No more, just 15 seconds. So 100% everything you got just for 15 seconds. And then don't forget to rest because you're already going to be riding hard. And the fourth way, and probably the hardest, is doing this uphill. So obviously you're going to need to change your gears down a little bit, but you're going to start uh, you know, a normal uphill ride, you know, gear 5, gear 8, whatever you're comfortable with depending upon the incline. And then for 15 seconds, you're going to give it everything you got to get up that hill. Now the advantage of this is gravity is also working against you, so it's going to work on those muscles as well. So these are four different ways you can look at sprinting, and hopefully these tips will help you improve your cycling. This is Cycling Explorer, hoping you have a great day. Now this is my sports tracker. 
and basically if you see the 20.8 miles that's when I went for a ride through downtown and was taking a whole bunch of pictures still did 20 miles for the day it tells me how long I have to go before sunset um, if I want to do a new workout you just click on the new workout um, I'm not going to go ahead and do that but uh, this is what I've done over the course of the last few days you see 44 42 40 miles um, we've had some rain the last couple of days so I haven't been out as much as I normally have been but uh, I like this app because you can go in and let's say I want to click on uh, this one I click on this one and I can look at there's the route I did I went down to Pickerington Ponds on that particular day um, and it will break down my laps so I can set it up across the top of whether you want it at five miles or one mile and it will go ahead and adjust it for you which I really like because then I can sit and look at my pacing and compare it to some of the other days and how I've done it um, obviously there's my chart you're gonna have the speed versus the latitude um, you know on a bike you slow down and speed up quite frequently depending upon where you are and that happens to be over the course of uh, I think I have that set for a mile so again pretty straightforward app um, you can hook it hook it up on the internet if you want um, I really don't do that again I track everything internally but you can do that um, let's see. and that's all there really is to it you want to start a new one you just click on that um, you know what the activity happens to be the heart rate alarm which I don't have the heart rate set up for this um, continue and once I click start it will tell me um, all sorts of information and it will also give me an update every mile of my pace um, my overall pace how far I've gone which is really kind of nice I love it with the earphones because then I can hear okay I'm at this point where I was three days ago is it better or is it worse Thanks for watching, now get out and explore.